Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for your love and kind and tender mercy. You're God. And you're God all by yourself, Alpha and Omega. We're pleased to have you pleased with our life. We have faith and you said without faith it is impossible for us to please you and you sent faith and faith came to us. Thank you for your mercy, thank you for your forgiveness, your long suffering, your kindness, your forgiveness. Thank God for Jesus. He is a friend that stick closer to the brother. We bless you. Come in here. Take control. Fix it like it ought to be. Get your glory out of our lives. and all of his people, Pastor Dr. James L. Wheeler here, President and Founder of Mighty FGCC Bible College and Theological Seminary in this country and literally abroad. I pastor the Full Gospel Christian Church at 5901 Dr. Martin Luther King at Home Avenue, three blocks on all the Pearson Road where you're always welcome. Because this ministry is a teaching ministry giving birth to other teachers and other ministers, Arise and Shine Ministries, Dr. Michael Kernan, Friday from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Rise and Shine Ministries, Dr. Michael Kernan, every Friday from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. The Word of God Ministries, Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. by Dr. Paulette Simpson, the Word of God Ministry. Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m., Dr. Paulette Simpson. We're going to pray, but I should tell you the minister of the Full Gospel Christian Church that is in conjunction with these other pastors. Sunday, the Full Gospel Christian Church is on Channel 17. Sunday from 8 to 10 a.m., Monday, from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, Wednesday, from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Wednesday again. From 9 to 11 p.m. Thursday. From 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. And Saturday again from 7 to 8 p.m. Our email is wheelerphd at att.net. <coughs> you can get us on Facebook. Just type in James Wheeler, sir. Get us on Ustream.com. Our website is www drwheelerfullgospel.com Our cell phone is 810-423-2433. I tell you this every time I come before you. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you know. Whatever you know, whatever you know, You must share it with others, particularly if you know what you know about Jesus. When you learn to learn, when your purpose of learning to learn that others may learn, then you know. Our subject this evening has been the same thing for a lot of evenings. The voice of praise. We're going to backtrack ourselves in Psalms 23. Psalms 23. A testimony is a personal statement of boldness and security about God that you make. So Psalms 23 is David's testimony. Psalm 23 and 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. 
Now, if you're born and raised down south or out west someplace, you know a shepherd job. Take care of the sheep. Protect the sheep against the wolf. So what we see here in Psalm 23, the Lord Jesus is my shepherd. He protects me against the wolf. The wolf, he got a long, straight mouth with big teeth, but it ain't his bite that you have to concern yourself with. It's what he says. So David is boasting. God the Father said about David, Behold, I've found David, a man of my own heart. Now David was a killer. But God found him when he was under the influence of a killer. Psalm 23, the Lord is, the next word is personal. You can't testify about somebody else, shepherd. And I don't know how those shepherds know all his master's sheep. But a lot of shepherds had their flocks grazing on those hills of Jerusalem. And that shepherd could go and get his master's sheep from that other group. We're led by the Holy Spirit. The shepherd is led by his scent, his nose. He knows the scent of every sheep his master owns. And his master will hold him responsible. You let my sheep go astray, Psalms 23 and 1. This is a personal proclamation. Oh, you going nowhere else. Psalm 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me beside the still water because the sheep will not drink running water. I don't care how fresh it is. He will not drink it. You have to take a shovel and put it aside. And look, he's talking about what God is to him what God is doing for him, how long he's going to keep on loving God, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. You can put a period that and go to sleep if you know what the shepherd means. I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd. Lead me to the water. Protect me against the wolf. Go get me when I leave the flock. I'm not going to fear. I ain't going to want. Because I put my faith in the shepherd. The Lord Jesus is our shepherd. And in this case of a dog, you spare a dog back, well, what you got? God, that shepherd's job, circle the flock. As long as he's circling the flock, he have opportunity to see if a wolf wants to enter into the flock. So he washed it to perimeter. You, you, got, you, got to, you got to get this one. And when you pray the Lord's Prayer, you're doing the same thing as, as Psalm 23. Our Father. Now we say that he's in heaven. Earth is a long way from heaven. But the anointing make them one. You can actually have heaven on earth in your spirit. And you can boast. Now people that don't have heaven in their spirit, they're not going to accept you. They think you're crazy. But the brother said, I know who I serve and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I committed to him against the day of the wolf. David said that. Our subject, a voice of praise. Now you can't, you can't horn in on somebody else's praise. 
You hear people say, man, we had a good time at church Sunday. We. No, no, ain't no we. I. Because the scripture said that the Lord is my shepherd. And because I belong to him, he belonged to me. He's my connection to the godly fold. And because of that, I shall not want. I, I saw one time a, a prophet went out and didn't have to eat, and God sent a bird out. Get some food and bring it back to the man. Then the food ran out, and obedience gave birth to faith. I'll never leave you, good God Almighty, nor forsake you, even to the end of the world. Then the Holy Spirit tell us, the preachers, go ye into all the world. He did say it. And preach the gospel to every creature, sinner and saints. Our subject is the voice of praise. Nobody in the Bible praised God <coughs> more than David. Psalms 23. But look how personal <clears throat> our relationship must be with God. The Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, look at the security statement. I shall not want for nothing. I went to the doctor the other day. They got some kind of machine. They lay it on flat your back and put you up in that machine. Now, you, you up in that machine. They had to wake me up. I wouldn't sleep. No fear. Hey, absolutely no fear. How come? This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. You can't do nothing with this body, man. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I, David, the father of Solomon, shall not want God make me to lie down in green pastures. You lay sheep down in green grass pastures, that's paradise to a sheep. They don't even have to get up, they just move their head and eat laying down. Huh? The shepherd's job, take the sheep to green grass. Now the shepherd's job is to make sure there's a wolf out there outside this pasture. So the shepherd never leave the sheep. How come? Wolf will come in. See, church members, they're not shepherds. They're sheep. And that devil, he's tricky. I can hear him. Bah! Just hush up. Don't bah back. You're trying to get your attention. Somebody saw me outside today and said, did you, did you know that this famous man's son, they caught him stealing some money and gave him three years in prison? I said, no, I didn't know that, but I tell you what. I know somebody myself that was in prison, and I know somebody came and paid my debt. He was ready to go then. Gossip is cheap. Our subject, the voice of praise. See, this same David said, all of my appointed time, I worship him. Now, all of David's appointed time wasn't good times. Solomon ran his brother, his, his father off of the throne. Outcast him. He had just a few hundred people. But God called him. David had lots of brothers. Big old strong looking brothers. 
and they were going to anoint one for king, and they brought the biggest, strongest one. And the Holy Ghost said, you don't have no other brothers? He said, yeah, that David out there keeping the sheep. He said, bring him here. Scrowny. Smell like the sheep. Because he loved to be with the sheep as if he's God's sheep. Our subject. The voice of praise. And here David is speaking to us of his personal experience in Psalm 23. The first statement he made is, I'm going to tell you right now, the Lord is my shepherd. And because of that, I shall not want for nothing. Now, you need to get that. You need to get that night next time you pray. Uh, fella met me on the street out there. You know, God didn't bless me last week. I prayed. I had that number right on my mind, and I didn't play. God show us me. I said, what God you got? He was puffing on that cigarette. What, what? Your name, your, your God name is Brother Nicotine. Blame God for not letting him hit a number. <clears throat> I heard the brother say, my God shall supply. He did say it. All of your needs are caught on his rich and glory by Christ Jesus. God the Father don't do nothing without God the Son, and God the Son don't do nothing but permission from the Father. And the Holy Spirit oversees it and teaches it to us. Psalm 23, 2. He, God, make me to lie down in green pasture where the food is. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I just stick my neck out and eat something. Because somebody got to write a scripture. My God shall supply what? All of your need. Well, this is just a picture of that. He just reach out and eat. Good God, my, and the shepherd. He's up high looking. You know, wolves don't like sheep. Now, when you find sheep that don't like sheep, somebody's a goat. Yes, sir. One spirit dwell within, and all her members are redeemed and triumphant over sin. Oh, church of God. <laughs> Psalms 23. David said, God make me to lie down in green pasture, not dry grass. And then God lead me beside what? The still waters, because he know I'm not going to drink that running water. Look at David said, I backslid once in Psalm 23 and 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For what reason? For his name's sake. God is in here now. Yea, yeah. look at the negative conditions that David is sitting before us and give God the glory for delivering him. Yea, yeah. though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, so you can't climb a mountain a certain time of day without it casting a shadow on you. And the shepherd always takes his sheep up off of the plain ground. Find a plateau in the mountain. Put them in that cliff and he sit right here at the mouth. If you get these sheep, you have to deal with me. What, what do you think the cross represents? I was sinking deep in sin far from a friendly show. See, if you're in deep water and you're far from the show and you're sinking, that means you can't swim. 
but you can see Jesus. Hold on, I'm coming. <laughs> ah, huh? He just they, and they just pat the water, trying to stay till Jesus come. He's here now. You don't have to tread no water. Como sete, y'all listen to me. You don't have to tread no water now. You and the water belong to Jesus. I'm enjoying this teaching. Psalm 23 and 4. Yeah, David said, though I walk through, not into, through me and get out on the other side. So don't be testifying, child, you know I'm down. You need to be saved. So David is showing the advantage of deliverance on the other side of a demonic attack. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, look, look, look how bold he is. I will fear no evil. Where is the evil in the shadow of what? Death. Satan used confusion. But David said, I'm going to walk right through it and I ain't going to feel nothing. Because the Lord is my shepherd. He'll guide me. He'll direct my path. He'll deal with that sheep. He'll deal with that wolf too. Psalm 23, 4, yea. See, everything ain't okie dokie. Salvation is not given to you on a plot of ease. David said in 23, 4, yes. Though I walk through the valley, look, of the shadow that death cast. So what is death? A shadow. I used to be a barber and work for a fellow. He said, if I give you $500, one thirty in the morning, Will you walk through Graceland Cemetery? Then nobody said nothing. I said, yeah, give me the money. I wouldn't even say anything out there is dead. Psych. Psych. He said, oh, Willie, you ain't cool. Dead folk can't hurt you. If your mind is not set on Jesus, they can give you a mind and make you hurt yourself. Psalms 23 and 4. David said, yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. He walking through the valley. Not of death. The shadow of death. So somebody is on the mountain casting the shadow of death down in the valley. He said, I'm going to walk right through that shadow because the devil ain't bothered up no one. This is, a testimony is a boast about how good God is in spite of what the devil is trying to do. Psalm 23 and 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Satan is casting a shadow of death. And David said, I will fear no evil. So anything that the devil casts is evil. As a matter of fact, if you want to spell devil, just put a D on evil. And you got devil. Devil. Look what David said to God the Father. For you are with me. This is a testimony. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod, the staff, or sticks to guide the sheep. The staff is one that got a hook on the end of it. If a sheep fall down into a crevice, the shepherd will go take that and put it around his neck, catch him any way he can and get him out of there. And David is saying in Psalm 23 and 4, Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, the 
brother preaching now. My cup, I shout it. My cup runneth over. Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. I'm going to stay saved in spite of all hell. Psalm 24, 1 through 10. This is still David. He's testifying now in Psalm 25, 24. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, everything on it belong to him. The world and they that dwell therein, God own every soul, he own everything. And here's how he created it in Psalm 24 and 2. For he had found it up upon the sea and establish it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? They go answer it in Psalm 24 and 4. He that had clean hands, they go, they go and send into God's holy place. And a pure heart, who had not lift up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek God, that seek the face, your face, O Jacob. Lift up your head all you gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. Look into it, look at now. And the king of glory shall come into your heart when you open your heart up to him. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors. Look. And the king of glory shall come in. Look at the direction now in Psalms 24 and 9. Lift up your heads. Have you seen people that is despondent? Always looking down like that. Nobody love me. <laughs> Nobody seem to care. The Holy Ghost told David in Psalm 24 and 7, lift up your heads, which means he talked to more than David, or you gates, and be ye lifted up. Go where you look. You everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come into your hearts that you have lifted up by the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Look at this. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So what the text is showing you in our subject is the voice of praise. Psalm 24 and 7. Lift. Psalm 24 and 9. Lift. You can't find heaven's God looking down. When
when you look up. That's the direction that implies anticipation. God is going to bless me because I'm looking to him. Now, when you do this, don't expect the world to agree with you. You need to get this. The world is not your friend. It's not your friend. Psalm 24 and word 1. The earth is the Lord. The whole earth belong to God. All the world belong to God. And the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. So a sinner belong to God. All souls are mine, but the soul that sins shall what? Surely die. He gives that to you. Psalm 24 and 2. For he had found it up upon the seas and established it upon the flood, sea, water, anointing, motion, carry. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? You see, you got to look up to go up. Ascend means go up. So David is asking in Psalm 24 and 3, Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Look, he didn't answer this. He that had clean hands. If you're not saved, you can't stand in the holy place. You can repent, then stand in the holy place. Psalm 24 and 4. He that had clean hand and a pure heart. When you got clean hand and pure heart, look at it. Who had not lift up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. When I was a boy in Mississippi, we asked somebody to do something. He said, I cross my heart and hope to die. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. But God is merciful and kind and forgiving. I cross my heart and hope to die if I don't do what I told you I was going to do. Nobody can keep a death promise but the one that got control over death. And he died to do it. But they said that third morning he came up, boasting, I'm up, y'all. And all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. They didn't believe in nobody but the winner. And Peter ran to the sepulchre of the sea. <laughs> he looked in there and saw the napkin laying here, the napkin laying there, and didn't see the body of Christ. Look. And he left doubting. People still don't believe in women preaching. Women ain't the preacher, that spirit is. Psalms 24. Yeah. This is the reassurance that everything you need, God got it. How come in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If you want anything good, you got to go to the one that got it all. I went to the doctor today and he gave me Five different pills. And I haven't been sick since I was 76. So I thought I could take all the pills just with water. And my daughter said, Papa, why are you bothering and weaving like that? I said, it must be this medicine. She said, did you eat something? I said, no. She said, Paul, Paul. I said, well, they don't have it on the medical thing. So she fixed me some grits. I ate the grits. And I, she said, Papa, you got to put something in your stomach. I said, with five doctors agreed, I didn't know you had to eat before you take medicine. Yeah. And I found out, if you got good insurance, they'll load your trunk with medicine. But if your insur insurance ain't from Jim Motors, they'll loan your aspirins and give you a key to get out of there. They after the money. They after the money. And I told Sadie when I left home, I'm gonna teach. He said, "Well, we'll see." I said, "You sure is." When I
when God called you to do something, you need to get this. It's the devil's job to try to prevent you from doing what God has called you to do. He can't get that done. He can't get it done. So the sister said, well, I'm going to look to the help which come in my help. My help come from the Lord. You need to know that. That ain't just some scripture. That's the Holy Ghost telling you where to get your help from. And I laid down in the bed and looked like the bed was going like that. So my daughter came and fixed me some grits. I ate that grit and ain't stack of sense. Get knowledge and won't come off such a uh, And get wisdom and you won't come off such a uh, And all you're getting, what? Get an understanding. You need something in your stomach when you're going to take medicine. I only learned that today because it wasn't only medicine, eat some food, then take care of it. So I figured, well, he's a doctor. He need, he, but he assumed that I knew. You can't assume folk know stuff. The Lord Jesus said, the little children shall lead you. I had a friend with him in the shop. His wife was cutting chicken. Very sharp knife. Cut her finger. Her finger was leaning over like that on the skin. She had a three-year-old grandbaby. She said, oh, Granny, Jesus! She looked at that thing and fainted. God said, except you humble yourself and become as a little child, a little baby child, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. So humility to God is the key to glory. Humility to God. Is the key, Makomo Sataha, is the key to glory. I'm looking forward next month. Bible college starts in September. I'm looking for 35 or 40 people. I'm also expecting to graduate six or eight. When you read the book, the book that you live and you're bold about it, people peel off. Where are they going? The people peel off from Jesus like that, and God asked his disciples, will you also forsake me? Peter said, you, you have the word of life. Where can we go? That's us. That's us. Well, that's me. Psalms 24. You, you need to get the vasticity, the bigness of this Psalm 24. The earth. Now, earth pretty big. Belong to the Lord. And the fullness thereof. The world belong to God. And they that dwell therein ain't nothing out of control. Jesus died to give us an opportunity. He said, come unto me, all you that labor in the heavy laden, I give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek. He did say it. And I'm lowly in heart. And when you become meek and lowly in heart, you should find rest for your soul. When Jesus fed the 15 to 20,000 people, he said, you're not coming to me because of words I'm speaking to you. He said, you're seeking the loaves, but nevertheless, come. Mercy. Mercy. Jesus said, those that come to me, it's in the book, I will no wise cast them out. Then 
he said in another place, so whosoever will, let him come and drink the waters of life freely. We have an invitation from heaven given from God by Jesus to everybody that's alive on the earth. Come. All you that labor in heaven, I'll give you red. Sinners, you labor. Sinners, you labor. All of you come. And I'll give you rest. When I give you rest, you must take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek. Yes, sir. And I'm lowly in heart. And when you become meek and lowly in heart, at that time you shall find rest for your soul. Psalms 24. The first verse, the earth is the Lord's. Now you need to get that. And the fullness of it. Everything on earth belongs to God along with earth. So when things are out of order, God see them. And a lot of times God won't fix the things out of order. He said, come unto me, come up out of it. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and I'm lowly in heart. Pastor, you need to get this. And when you become meek and lowly in spirit, at that point, God said you will find rest for your soul. Set the choir down. Set the organ player down. Set the guitar player down and seek the humility of God that contains your eternal life. Our subject, the voice of pregnant Kamaha. Voice of praise. In Psalm 24, the earth belonged to the Lord, and the food and thereof, everything up on the earth belonged to the Lord. The world belonged to the Lord. And they that dwell therein belong to the Lord. Sinners are saints. But that's a general statement there in Psalm 24 and 2. It's looking for explanation in Psalm 20, 24 and 3. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Then David answered it. He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitfully, she shall receive the blessing from the Lord. Is that in your Bible? You got to do that. You got to do that. If you don't do this, you ain't going to receive nothing from the Lord. And you don't have to try to put emotion on it. <coughs> well, uh, hey, hey, that ain't in here. These are instructions for the human person from God through Christ to come. Everything belong to God, he said. These are houses that they're breaking in. Those are God's houses. And when you take that stuff out to the junkyard, they got a big bulldozer out there. They break it up and pile it up so you can't find no evidence. My grandmother used to tell me, James, you do evil and hide your hand. I didn't understand that when I was a little boy. The minute you take that stuff out to that junkyard, five minutes later, you're not going to recognize it. It's going to be in a big square bundle of metal. Now, now get in there and take your stuff out. The devil would teach people how to be thieves. Our subject, the voice of praise, and we're in Psalm 24. The fourth verse in Psalm 24, he that had clean hands 
and a pure heart who had not lift up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive the blessing of the Lord. That's Bible teaching there. If you don't live right, you got nothing coming from God but a killing. Psalms 24 and 5. He that receive the blessing of the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is a generation of them that seek him. That seek your face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates. And be ye lifted up. Go where you look. Just don't look up, get up. But you can't get up before you look up. Psalm 27, 24 and 7. Lift up your heads, O you gates. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. If you want to be blessed, you got to follow these instructions. There ain't nothing added to it, nothing taken from it. This is not emotional. This is anointing. Psalm 24, 8. Who is this King of glory. Well, I'm glad you asked him, David said. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift. You see what he keep on saying? Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift up your heads or you ain't get nothing from God. Look toward the place that you anticipate receiving something from. Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, look. And the king of glory shall come in when you look up to him. Who is the king of glory? Well, I'm glad you asked me. The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. Now the word glory, Exquisite. You, you, you can't describe glory too, too good. Exquisitely valuable. But you see, he they said, lift up your hearts. He said, lift up your head. So he going to put some information in your head. That the anointing going to sink it down 18 inches in your heart. That's where the shout come in at right there. Not the information, the location of the one that could produce the information. We are in Psalm 25. Because God worked with David like that in Psalm 24, 1 through 10, Look at David's conversation to God in Psalm 25. Unto you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Now in Psalm 24, he said, lift up your head. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he's near. So you put your intellect to work and God showed you something good. Now he wanted to put your heart to work. Psalm 25 and 1. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my what? Soul. That's your inner man. You lift up your head, now you lift it up your soul. It's a process. Oh my God. I trust in thee. How come? Well, I lift up my soul to you. And this is not intellectual. This is not a head kind of thing. David is saying, my soul trusts in you. My inner man trusts in you. Psalm 25 and 2. Oh, my God. I, my soul, trust in you. 
Let me not be ashamed, because when you trust in God, the devil is going to try to bring you some foolish stuff. So the opposite of truth is a lie. Opposite to good is bad. Opposite to Christ is Satan. The opposite to hell is heaven. You got all these opposites, and you got to deal with them. Psalm 25 and 2, oh my God. You see David talking to God? I trust in you. Step two. Recognize who God is. Step two. Then testify. I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Is that in your Bible? <clears throat> so when you trust in God, your enemy is going to come and try to bring you down. It's a normal thing. Yea, let none that wait on you be ashamed. So this is community prayer. The brother ain't just praying for himself. He's praying for the church of the living God. Don't let nobody that trusts in you be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress without cause. That's what sin is. He's going to make a request of God in Psalm 25 and 4. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. We don't know, saints. We don't know. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he will do what? Direct your path. David said, yeah, but you got to ask him to do it. God just don't thump his goodness out there. So he asked the Lord, don't let it transgress in Psalm 25 and 3. He said, to make sure I don't transgress, Psalm 25 and 4, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Look at the request. Show me, lead me, teach me, lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you do I wait all the day. That don't mean sit there and do nothing. That means do what he told you to do until he comes to give you another instruction. Psalm 25 and 5. Lead me in your truth. Now the scripture says, your word is truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you do I wait all the day. Now that's something to me when the devil is raising hell, you standing on holy ground, waiting for God to cancel that hell or get it away from you. Psalm 25 and 6. Look. Remember, O oh Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. You always been mercy and kind and tender. So don't forget when it comes to me, Lord. Be yourself with me like it was with the other brothers. He's 